Hi and welcome to another video. I'm MacGyver. I'm going to do something completely different today. So here's my setup and it might look immediately a bit different to usual. There's no cargo scanner on board. That's because I'm not going to be scanning anything today. Normally what I look at is corvettes as they jump through this gate or ships as they come up to me. And today I'm not going to do that. Today I'm going to try and experiment and see if I can blow up frigates as they jump through the gate. And today I'm starting with Amar frigates. So I'm going to try and blow up as many Amar frigates as I can. I'm not totally crazy. This is me practicing. So I've got an alt who's in the same corp who has got two of each of the Amar frigates. We're going to fly them through the gate and I'm going to see which of them I can lock and blow up as they're autopiloting their way to the Jita station. So at the moment my ult is in perimeter. I'm going to undock it and walk to the gate and then stick it on autopilot. Meanwhile, I'll be on my to see if I can lock on that ship and blow it up before it warps off. There it is. Okay. So he's showing up now. So he's on the gate at zero. Is my guy boat. I'm going to activate the gun and then spam this button. And it should be the case that as soon as he jumps through, I lock on and shoot. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you my fitting here. Seven 280mm howitzer artillery twos, and it's got Republic Fleet Empire small ammo. Now, normally, if I'm ganking, I would be using the Domination EMP small, but that's really expensive. Look, compare the price. For 14 of them, it shows as two and a half million, whereas for 1,260 of the Republic Fleet, it's only 680,000 disc. So while I'm experimenting, I'm using the cheap stuff. It should still give me a good idea. I've got two sensor boosters cheap ones and two gyro stabilizers as well and a couple of rigs that increase the damage caused by the guns and that one increases the power grid as well so let's give it a shot so i will set my destination as gta 44 go on to autopilot activate my gun and see what happens there he goes Now that blew up, that blew up instantly. The station. Drive 1250, rec number one. So that's a crucifier. Now obviously this tells you everything. This is just the hull that I'm shooting. Most crucifiers won't be flying like this. Some will, most ships that will be fit will have resists or boosters or plates they will have something that increases the tank of the ship. It could be increasing the shield, the armor, or the hull. All this test is really going to be useful for at the moment is finding out if I can blow up the hulls. So I'm flying my ult up to get another ship. There's something that I did there was overheat the guns. But if I look at the guns, if I look at the damage caused there by the guns, it's 1599. 178 HP and 355 HP for the three different types of damage it causes. If I overheat that and then look at that again, the damage is exactly the same. So in overheating these guns, you're not increasing the amount of damage you get from one shot. What you're doing is decreasing the amount of time it takes to have a second shot. Now with what I'm doing, I don't need to take a second shot. So there's absolutely no need for me to be overheating these guns. All I'm going to do is damage them. And if I'm doing tests over and over and over again, I don't want to do that. So for that reason, I've turned off the overheating of the guns. Now, what we've blown up there is one crucifier. Let's try another one. So I'm going to warp my alt down to the GTA gate and jump and then stick it on autopilot. Got my gun active. I'm just going to keep clicking here. Ah, now I've got 50 structure left. Now in theory, I just did exactly the same thing twice and should have had the same result twice and I didn't. So one of the interesting features in EVE Online is your ability to look at your damage log under utilities. So if I look at the two different shots I took there, 
The first one was 1250 and the second one was 1200. That's the amount of damage that I caused with the guns. So I've taken a look at the two videos of the Crucifier getting shot. The first time when it did pop, it was 15 kilometers away and the second time it was 17 kilometers away. I have swapped out my ammo for the Domination EMP, which is gonna be a bit more expensive, but you wanna get the right results. The gate's big and you can try and get inside the gate or as close to the gate as you can. But because the gate's big, something that is 18 kilometers away from the gate could be 20 kilometers away from you because the gate's so big. So you can try and get as close as you can into the middle, but when something jumps through, it could be between 15 and 18 or even 19 kilometers away from you. So for example, I've got my alt here orbiting the gate at 18 kilometers. Now I am right on the gate here but he's still shown as being 20 kilometers away from me. So what I'm gonna get him to do is jump through again and see if it makes a difference with this ammo that I've got here. The other thing that might be a factor is when a ship jumps through, it could be pointing anywhere at all. It could be pointing towards the station where it wants to go or the complete opposite direction. So when it starts to align to the station, it's moving and a moving target also affects the amount of damage that you can cause when you shoot it. These are all the factors you have to take into account. So let's try it again. There's an element of luck here because I don't know how far away he's going to be when he jumps through. And he's jumping now. This time I only got halfway through the structure. Now if we go back to the logs, we can see something else here. The first two damage that I caused here, it shows up in the logs as hits. Where in here it says grazes. Now I mentioned about a ship moving can affect the amount of damage that you can inflict upon that ship. And I think that that's what grazes means, is that it caught it while it was moving. Let's repair up the crucifier, try again. I spoke to another ganker about this and he's of the opinion that if you catch the ship just as it's going into warp then it may only register as some of your guns hitting the ship and not all of them which would certainly explain why i only got half damage there and maybe where grazes come into it the other explanation would be that all of the guns hit it but they got a really small amount of damage done because it was on the move so let's try it again we'll stick with the domination emp and we'll see what happens this time Okay. What's that? Four times we've tried and only managed to blow up one. Let's get them repaired up. Try again with the Republic fleet. We've got my Alts Crucifier slow bolting towards the GT gate. I have loaded up the Republic fleet EMP. The last time I jumped through, I think it was 18 kilometers away. I think this is going to be the big factor, is just how far away he is. <gasps> wow. So that was 17 kilometers. <laughs> one, two, three, one. Damage caused. Let's get the gun ready and get him to jump through, autopilot through. We'll see how far away he lands from me when he comes through. Okay, here we go. 15. Now. So, it's 15 kilometers. And it still didn't blow up. So I think we can rule out distance as being the only factor. So let's try something out. Let's try moving the ship. After saying that it, it, it probably wouldn't be a factor. I'm going to put the ship at 17 kilometers from my ship and see if I can blow it up there with the ship stationary. So if it is the movement of the ship that's a factor, then it's the alignment time, which means that if you've got your 
skills trained up and you align quicker, or you've got mods that allow you to align quicker, it may well be the case that you get less chance of having damage caused on your ship. So here we go, We're 17 kilometers away. Just gonna lock him and shoot him. That could just be that that's as good as that I can get with these guns at that range. I'm going to repair it and try it again under exactly the same circumstances and see what happens. Okay. Nine one six. There's definitely a random element at play here. There is a disappointing lack of explosions in this video so far. This time we're going to move it up to 15 kilometers. Have him stationary at 15 kilometers and see how we get on. Okay, there he is. And let's try it. Oh, five HP off. But this is all being done for a reason. I want to figure out if I can shoot a frigate as it jumps through the gate, if I can shoot a frigate as it's autopiloting towards me. So this is the final test. Final test is I'm gonna autopilot back to perimeter and see if I can blow up the ship as it's autopiloting back towards the gate. Because these are the two ways that I blow up ships. So that ship is warping to the Stargate now. Now when a ship autopilots towards a gate, it lands 10 kilometers from the gate. And here he comes in. So we're gonna try and blow him up at 10 kilometers. Got a result. So as I click into this kill mail, it says total damage is 9350 and I'm thinking I never caused 9350. That's the total damage that I've caused that ship, including all of the repairs that it's done. If we click on the crucifier, we can see the resists here means that only some of the damage that I'm inflicting upon that ship is actually getting through and causing damage. So it isn't that my guns are underperforming, in total it's that some of that damage isn't making its way through to the ship as well but that's the crucifier done the next ship we're going to look at is the executioner so again i'm going to set my destination to jita walk down to the gate and then just select autopilot 17 kilometers wow now that's interesting i didn't even get a shot off so the inertia modifier of the crucifier is 3.35 and what it says the inertia modifier affects acceleration and turning speed positively as the value decreases. The executioner's base inertia modifier is 2.85. Now what that means is when it jumps through the gate it's turning to a line even quicker. So quick in fact that I can't even target it when it jumps through. And let's try at 10 kilometers, autopiloting. Let's see if we can blow it up. And we'll see what happens when it gets to the sweet spot of 10 kilometers. Oh, now, that was fairly decent. So the damage caused that time is 1295. This time, I'm going to try and catch the executioner while it's autopiloting at around 10 or 11 kilometers, but I'm going to be using the Domination EMP. If the Republic fleet could almost blow it up, then they should be able to definitely do it. Here we go. Kill! Gonna autopilot back through. See if we can kill him. 
15 kilometers. So let's wait until it hits 10. Right, got him again. And that was with the Republic fleet. I'm trying to get a feel here for what ships I can blow up when they jump through. What ships I have to wait until they're autopiloting before I've got a chance of killing them. And I could be sitting down with spreadsheets and looking at all the numbers and comparing them that way, but I think that this is a lot more fun. The next is the Inquisitor. Not a ship you see an awful lot of, the Inquisitor. Okay, I'm spamming the button. See what happens when he comes through. Wow. He did. That was uh, pretty conclusive. Let's uh, try that again. Here we go. Yay! I think it's safe to say that if you can kill the Inquisitor while it's aligning 15 kilometers away, you can kill it at 10 kilometers when it's autopiloting towards you. It's a shame we don't see more Inquisitors because they look like they'll be uh, pretty fun things to kill. Next up is the Magnate. Now it, it's got much lower defense, 1545 EHP. Bear in mind that's my skill levels as well and this character that bumps that up. I don't have high hopes for the Magnate being able to survive this. Jita is set as the destination. Go up to the gate and hit autopilot. We've got the cheap ammo in. Fourteen kilometers. That's lucky. I think we've seen that that's lucky to get as close as fourteen kilometers. But the magnet's gone. One zero six two. That's all it took. I'm gonna keep trying with the magnet jumping through until it jumps through at about 16 or 17 kilometers and we'll see if we can get it then. So what I'm going to do is spam the button when he comes in to lock him, but if it looks like he's 15 kilometers away, I'm going to try and disarm the guns before it kills him. I only want to see what happens if he's 16, 17, 18 kilometers away. He was only 15 kilometers, so I managed to turn the guns off before it hit him. Try that again. Oh, I killed him. That's that. Magnates die. The next ship up is a Punisher, which from experience I found to be a tough little nut to crack. Look at that. 2,495 EHP. Let's jump through, but um, I think I know how this is going to go already. Have a look. 889. I know it's 17 kilometers, but I think it's fair to say we're not going to have much luck trying to crack the Punisher. I'm going to move straight on to trying to blow up the Punisher while it's autopiloting. So here he comes in. Oh, now that was actually a wee bit more than I thought I would get with one shot. 889 is against 1279. Significant difference. Let's repair the Punisher and try the autopiloting again. him off. That took two shots, which you're not going to get when you're ganking in Jita. If you know any of the reasons why these factors come into play, what looks like a random factor, or if there's something that I'm overlooking here, then please let me know. 986 there with the domination. One more thing that I'd like to try. Sometimes ships jump through and they just sit there. 
and I'd like to blow them up as well. This time I'm going to simulate something that happens a lot, which is a ship jumping through and just sitting there, not moving anywhere at all. That gives me time to get to my optimal range and try and kill. But this should be the easiest way to shoot another ship if you're stationary and he's stationary. So if I move to my optimals, and we'll put domination on for this one and target him just about completely still and he's completely still let's see what happens here and that's all that i would get from them that much by this point concord would have blown me up so i wouldn't get a second shot but seeing as he's an ally of mine and in the corp and my alt i get the second shot so my thoughts from that is punish is going to be very very difficult unless i'm prepared to sacrifice two thrashes to blow it up the last ship that we're looking at here from the amar frigates is a tormentor 2275 i think this is going to go the same way as the punisher I'm just going to get the ship to jump through and we'll try shooting at it from wherever it lands we won't make it warp off or anything okay so it's landed at 17 kilometers we'll give it a shot Not bad, but it didn't blow up, so that, that's no good to me. We'll try it at 10 kilometers autopiloting and we see how we get on then. Whoa, I was not expecting that. 1563, excellent. So I can put the Tormentor back on list of ships I could probably kill with this fit so the last thing that i'm going to try and do is what we did before with the punisher which is to have the tormentor jump in and just sit there i move to my optimals and we can see if we can kill it looking at the last kill where it was 10 kilometers away and moving you would think that it's a given that i would be able to kill it while it's stationary and i'm stationary but repeat what i said earlier which is these are not quite real world examples because there is no fittings on any of these. You get different fittings that would be good for PVP but which would be make no difference to the scenario that we're doing just now. So if a ship had a damage control or plates or a shield mods or rigs even that, that boost the tank in any way, then it's gonna fare a lot better than the bear hull which we've got here. I'm at the 10 kilometers from the Tormentor. Just gonna wait for my ship to stop. So we're both stopped. Let's see what happens. So the Tormentor, definitely going on my list of ships to gank. So just to sum up here, it would look like the Executioner, the Punisher, might be tough things to kill with just one Thrasher. The Crusader is 50-50. The Inquisitor and the Magnate melt and the tormentor it looks like it might be worth a bet the last thing that i'm going to try and do is uh, just put this into practice only not with one of my own alt ships but with a real life example so in the next couple of minutes i see a crusader executioner inquisitor magnate punisher or tormentor I'm going to try and blow it up I'm not even going to scan it So I've got a magnate. Not enough to justify it. I think it's only fair that I give the guy's stuff back to him now. Thanks for watching. That was a look into what Amar frigates I can kill with this Thrasher fit and a practical example. If you liked it, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you next time.